Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Uh, so today we continue on with our our uh, our book tear teardowns. The the last video, of course, was the uh, old book teardown, and this video is the new book teardown. So uh, today's silly job title is Electron Enchanter. I'm the Electron Enchanter, and I'll be going through the Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, fourth edition. So I'm looking forward to that. I've actually uh, been reading this book. I'm, I'm up to page 115. Um, and I've quite been enjoying this book. Uh, it was written by Stan Gibalisco and it was published by McGraw-Hill Education. Oh, and TAB. That's interesting. TAB are the people who um, uh, published the, uh, the uh, Encyclopedia of Electronics. And I've actually got the full set of those. They're epic, awesome uh, monstrous tomes. They're huge. Um, I guess we'll be uh, we'll be doing those. I suppose they're probably old books by now. The rule of thumb for a book, it's old. We call it old if it's more than 10 years old. Um, but I try to do them like 50 or 60 years old, really old. Uh, and anyway, anything that's been published in the last 10 years, that's a candidate for the new book. So presumably this meets the criteria. Let me check. Uh, published in 2018, fourth edition, 2018. First published, 1983. That's a long, long time ago, only 40 years ago. But the fourth printing came out 2018, so it meets the criteria. So let's pop over to the bench and have a look at this thing. Here we are on the bench. So this is our Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, 4th edition. Got a schematic on the front here. It's an uh, amplifier. Oh, it's a detector. This is an AM radio. Yeah, antenna, tuner, detector. They call the diode the detector. Uh, and then it goes into an amp. And our output comes out. So uh, let's see what it says on the back. Can you see that? <laughs> Electronics. This updated resource shows how to interpret schematic diagrams and design your own. Written by an experienced engineer, this easy to follow TAB guide shows step by step how to navigate the roadmaps of electronic circuits and systems. Filled with new illustrations and DIY examples, the book clearly explains how to understand and create high precision electronic diagrams. You will discover how to identify parts and connectors, in, interpret element ratings, and apply diagram-based information in your own projects. Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, 4th edition, also contains valuable appendices covering symbols, resistor color codes, and parts suppliers. Up-to-date coverage includes block, schematic, and pictorial diagrams, resistors and capacitors, inductors and transformers, switches, relays, conductors and cables, diodes, transistors, op amps and logic gates, electron tubes, cells and batteries, voltage dividers and reducers, simple and complex circuits, circuits <coughs> breadboards and wire wrapping, electronics troubleshooting, digital electronics and functional circuits. 25 US bucks. Fair enough. Learn more, do more mhprofessional.com Follow us on Twitter, mhprofessional. Also available as an ebook. There you go. Now they've they've got this funny binding with this book. I don't understand the um the rationale for that. Why why do they do that? I don't know. But it's uh it's just uh it's bound like that. I don't know if it's uh <coughs> I don't know. I don't know why they do that. Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, 4th edition, Stan Gibalisco, and you see in the back here um, that it's copyright 1983, 1991, 2014, and 2018. Wow. About the author, 
Stan Gibalisco, an electronics engineer, mathematician, and radio hobbyist, has authored numerous titles for the McGraw-Hill, Demystified, and Know-It-All series, along with dozens of other technical books and magazine articles. His work appears in several languages in countries throughout the world. Stan has been an active amateur radio operator since 1966. His cur his currently oh, it says his currently, but it means he currently holds the call sign W1GV. Nice one. I'm trying not to get involved as a ham radio operator. It is, I have to say, tempting. In memory of Jack. Okay. And then we've got contents over two pages. That's easy. This is going to be a quick one. So, we've got an introduction. <clears throat> then we've got chapter one, the master plan. Block diagrams. Schematic diagrams. Schematic symbol symbology. Component interconnections. A visual language. Chapter two, block diagrams. A simple example. Functional drawings. Current and signal paths, flow charts, process paths, summary. Chapter 3 Components and devices, resistors, capacitors, inductors and transformers, switches and relays, conductors and cables, diodes and transistors, operational amplifiers, electron tubes, electrochemical cells and batteries, logic gates, and a summary. Chapter 4. Simple circuits. Getting started. Component labeling. Troubleshooting with schematics. A more sophisticated diagram. Schematic slash block hybrids. A vacuum tube RF amplifier. Three basic logic circuits. Summary. Chapter 5. Complex circuits. Identifying the building blocks. Page breaks. Some more circuits. Getting comfortable with large schematics. Op amp circuits. And summary. Chapter 6. Diagrams for building and testing. Your breadboard. Wire wrapping. Kirchhoff's current law. Kirchhoff's voltage law. A resistive voltage divider. A diode based voltage reducer. Mismatched lamps in series. A compass ba based galvanom galvanometer. Galvanometer. I'm not sure what that is. We'll find out. Summary and conclusion. Appendix A, schematic symbols. Appendix B, resistor color codes. Appendix C, parts suppliers. Suggested additional reading and an index on page 203. There you go. So let's see what he says in the introduction. Have you caught the electronics bug and then balked at the side of diagrams with arcane signals when you decide to build, troubleshoot, or repair something? If so, you have the solution in your hands. Don't give up on electronics when you encounter strange looking circuit diagrams. You don't quit your favorite sport because you fear the rigors of training, do you? No, you get into condition with practice. <laughs> schematic diagrams or schematics sensibly drawn and neatly arranged can help you design, build, maintain and repair electronic equipment. But you must do some work to gain skill at reading and interpreting schematics. As you plan a trip by car, roadmaps show you how to navigate the countryside. As you work with electronic equipment, schematics show you the way through simple circuits, complex devices and massive systems. Once you know what the symbols represent, you'll find schematics no more difficult than roadmaps. While you read this book, you'll learn the rationale of schematics, how to draw or interpret each symbol, and how the symbol, symbols interconnect to form functional circuits. You'll also get a chance to do a few simple experiments. Then you can continue your quest in any field of electronics from amateur radio to space communications, from surround sound to virtual reality. You'll find my website www.sciencewriter.net. I also create videos. Simply search YouTube for my name. Have fun. Stan Gibalisco. So we will definitely search his YouTube for his name and we'll check out his website if it's still there. Now just uh, give me a second, I'm going to take a quick break. Back. I uh, had to go and get a drink of water. I, I find all this talking really dries my mouth out. I'm not called upon to do much type talking. I only talk a lot when I'm making videos for you guys. 
Anyway, here we are, the master plan. So we've got a, a block diagram there, oscillator, amplifier, power amplifier, telegraph key, and there's the schematic. Oh, that's not quite the schematic, is it? No, because it hasn't got any of those elements. Yeah, right. Talking about block diagrams, there's a picture of a breadboard. I remember when I was a kid, I had a, I had a breadboards like this from Dick Smith Electronics, and you screwed the bits together. It's pretty cool. Schematic diagrams, symbology. So it's talking about, uh, okay, two ways to look at a transistor, interconnections, visual language. So functional drawings, talking about block right diagrams still. This is a flow chart, fair enough. Flow charts are. Uh, I suppose we still use them, don't we? Components and devices, resistors. Talking about the color coding, fair enough. Capacitors. It's uh, electrolytic, uh, polarized capacitors. And uh, tuning capacitors. Fair enough. That's weird. What's weird? The above spellings aren't typos. Most engineers write Henry's rather than Henry's with an IE and Millie Henry's rather than Millie Henry's. Okay. So they use YS rather than IES. Interesting. I'll try to remember that. Although I have to say spelling really isn't my bag. I'm terrible at spelling. There's a... Uh, inductors they've got tapped inductors that's what those are called those are taps 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 switches and relays connections and obviously you've got your two that is not a connection that is a connection oh there we go prefer to separate them so that they're okay more obviously connected fair enough that's for a not connected. He says <laughs> he wish it hadn't gone out of fashion this particular style, but it has gone out of fashion, hasn't it? <clears throat> there we go. So we get diodes, various diodes. This is a Zener diode. Ah, oh, okay. That's a Zener. What are we talking about? Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, that's a Varactor diode. That is a Zener diode. And that's a gun diode. Fascinating. I don't think I've ever heard of a gun diode. Is it going to tell us what one of those is? Uh... A gun diode can generate or amplify radio signals at extremely high and microwave frequencies. Okay. I don't think I've ever used one. Now we've got a couple of uh, different types of uh, transistors. We've got uh, bipolar transistors on the top and then uh, JFETs or MOSFETs at the bottom. Cool. Op amps. It's an op amp symbol. Electron tubes, I suppose you do see them. We see them a lot in our old books, but uh, yeah, I don't know the details at all. I'm not planning to learn about electron tubes. It's cool that he's got a little section on it, though. You've got uh, batteries, and we've got logic elements. Let's see if we know what these are. That's an inverter. B is an XOR, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Or. Oh, okay. XOR at the bottom. Yeah. So that's just a plain old OR gate, OR, uh, NOR, AND, NAND, XOR. There you go. Alright, I have to remember that. Uh, simple circuits. Alright, there's a simple circuit. And uh, component labeling. Okay, so C1 for... Uh, 
capacitor, D for diode, F for, what are they labeled F? I'm not even sure, maybe it's a fuse. Uh, P for a plug, R for a resistor, and T for a transformer. Of course, they use T for transformer, so it's Q for transistors. Ah, oh, here we go. There's the full set. And as I said, Q for transistor. Might as well go through them, huh? A and T for antenna. B for battery. C for capacitor. C, B for circuit board. D for diode. E, P for earphone. F for fuse. G, N, D for ground. I for an incandescent lamp, IC for an integrated circuit. They also use U, yep, U for an integrated circuit. Uh, J for a receptacle, jack, or terminal strip. K for a relay, L for an inductor, LED for a light emitting diode, M for a meter. You know, sometimes for the LEDs, they're just called Ds like diodes. M for meter, NE for neon lamp, P for plug, PC for photocell. I think you might also see photocells as R's as well. I'm not sure. Uh, PH for earphone. Q for transistor, as we said earlier. R for resistor. RFC for radio frequency choke. RY for relay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. S for a switch or a telegraph key. SCR for a silicon controlled rectifier, SPK or SPKR for speaker, SR for a selenium rectifier, T for transformer, TP for terminal or test point, U for integrated circuit, V for vacuum tube, Y for quartz crystal, and Z for a circuit assembly. There you go. There's a schematic of a voltage doubler. Troubleshooting with schematics. You're the sleuth. A malfunction in an electronic device might not have a single easy to identify cause. Sometimes several possible causes exist and you must whittle the problem down to a single cause by following a process of elimination. Of course, that's assuming there is only a single cause, and sometimes you've got more than one problem. So uh, you don't want to assume you've only got one problem, because you might be wrong. Okay. Okay, so this is a schematic block hybrid. It's got block elements and, and detail elements. Fair enough. Vacuum tube RF amplifier. There we go. So we've got some uh, logic circuits here. We've got a truth table for not, or, and, nor, nand, and presumably XOR. Yep. Good old XOR. XOR is kind of my favorite. But if I had to pick between an AND gate and an OR gate, I'd pick an AND gate or a NAND gate. NAND gate. You can build everything with them. Apparently you can build everything with NOR gates as well, but, you know, who would do that? Well, there we go. We've completed our digital electronics section, and we're going to get into some complex circuits now. Looks like he's going to start us with an AM radio. Fair enough. Huh. Cats and tigers. Whenever you hear the term power amplifier, remember that the circuit does exactly what, it, what its name implies. It accepts a signal that can yield a certain amount of power and turns it into a signal that can yield more power. If a circuit amplifies current, it doesn't necessarily amplify power. The same holds true for voltage. Voltage amplification does not always translate into power amplification. You can call current or voltage amplifiers mewing cats. You might call power amplifiers as roaring tigers. There you go. Talking about page breaks for uh, for more complicated circuits. Pages are stuck together here. Okay, we're looking at some more circuits. The bridge rectifier again. 
getting comfortable with large schematics. Op amps. Summary. Reading and drawing schematics often involve breaking down complex circuits into simple ones. Then you can look at the system's parts and how they relate to each other rather than trying to imagine the whole thing as a single appliance. <coughs> there you go. As you study a complex schematic, the relationships among circuits will grow apparent. Once in a while, you'll see all of a system's secrets revealed at once. An aha moment. Who doesn't love their aha moments? Diagrams for building and testing. Breadboard. What are we looking at here? Components list for electronics experiments. You can find these items at retail stores. Okay. Talking about bits and pieces. Fair enough. Wire wrapping. Kirchhoff's current law. In this experiment, you'll construct a network that demonstrates one of the most important principles in DC electricity. You'll need five resistors, blah, 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 blah. An arrangement of resistors on breadboard for demonstrations of Kirchhoff's current law. All resistance values are in ohms. Solid dots indicate breadboard terminals. Solid lines show interconnections with bare copper wire. Dashed lines indicate jumpers. Gustav Robert Kirchhoff from 1824 to 1887 did research and formulated theories in a time when people didn't know much about electrical current. He used common sense to deduce the fundamental properties of DC circuits. Kirchhoff reasoned that the circuit, <coughs> the current entering any branch point in a circuit must always equal the current leaving that point. Kirchhoff's current law holds true no matter how many branches enter a given point and no matter how many branches leave it. There you go. And he's got a voltage law, of course. According to Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of potentials, voltages, across the individual components in a series DC circuit, taking polarity into account, always equals zero. <coughs> you can also call this rule Kirchhoff's second law or the principle of voltage conservation. A diode-based voltage reducer. Oh yeah, you just run some voltage through through a, a, a diode and it just chops off a couple of volts. About one and a half volts usually, I think, for a silicon diode. It's called the forward voltage, I believe. I was doing some circuits here with some lamps. Ah, this is the galvano galvanometer 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 in this experiment you'll see how a current carrying coil affects the behavior of a magnetic compass the production of a magnetic field by an electric current is called galvanism you'll need a campers or hikers compass calibrated in degrees three feet or one meter of enameled copper magnet wire a sheet of fine grain sandpaper and several resistors from your collection six fre fresh AA cells and some jumpers. You'll need your breadboard equipped with one holder of four AA cells and two holders for single A cells. You'll also need a paper punch that can, punt, that can put a uh, quarter inch or 6.4 millimeter holes in thin cardboard. There we go. So we're gonna um, put an electric loop around the compass and induce a magnetic field. Here's a factoid. A magnetic compass normally points, points toward geomagnetic north, which almost always differs from true or geographic north. This discrepancy exists because the north and south geomagnetic poles don't lie in the same places as the north and south geographic poles. 
The extent of the compass reading discrepancy depends on where you use it. For example, the, area, the error in Minneapolis, USA differs from the error in Paris, France. Plot the points. Okay, and here's our uh, schematic symbols. We might as well go through them. We've got an ammeter, we've got an amplifier, a general amplifier, we've got an inverting amplifier, uh, we've got a, uh, a operational amplifier, we've got an AND gate, we've got a balanced antenna, we've got a general antenna, we've got an antenna loop, <coughs> we've got a multi-turn antenna loop, we've got an electrochemical battery, We've got a feed-through capacitor. We've got a fixed capacitor, got a variable capacitor. We've got a split rotor variable capacitor. We've got a split, a split stator variable capacitor. We've got a cold electron tube cathode. I'm not going to go through all of those. Resonator, electrochemical cell, circuit breaker, coax cable, uh, piezoelectric crystal. Delay line, diac, <coughs> field effect diode, general diode, gun diode, which as we saw is for high frequency elect uh, microwaves and such, uh, light emitting diode, photosensitive diode. Okay, so you've got arrows going in and arrows going out to differentiate those. Pin diode, shot key diode. Tunnel diode, varactor, zener diode, directional coupler, directional watt meter. I don't know what a directional coupler is. Exclusive OR gate, uh, general female contact. Okay. Uh, ferrite bead, electron tube filament, fuse, uh, galvanometer really have trouble pronouncing that, don't I? And an electron tube grid, a chassis ground, earth ground, a oh, handset, head, double headset, single headset, okay, stereo headset, <coughs> uh, air core inductor, uh, bifiller air core inductor, tapped air core inductor, variable air core inductor, iron core inductor, bifiller iron core inductor. I've never heard bifiller. I think we should make some notes. Where's my notebook? I want to know what uh, bifiller means. I'll find that out. And what was the other thing that we were interested in? Directional coupler. Directional coupler. I'll look those up and I'll put them in the notes for this video. <sighs> Bifilar iron core inductor. Okay. And we've got... Uh, Tapped iron core inductor, variable iron core inductor, uh, powdered iron core inductor, power, bifilar powered iron core inductor, tapped powdered iron core inductor, blah, blah, blah. We've got a general integrated circuit. It's just a box with things. Fair enough. Um, uh, a jack. Two conductor, three conductor. Okay, they're jack, jack, jacks. Telegraph key. Uh, incandescent lamp. Neon lamp. Male contact, okay. Uh, general meter, micro ammeter, microphone, directional microphone, milliameter, NAND gate, negative voltage connection, NOR gate, NOT gate, opto isolator. OR gate. Uh, Non-polarized two-wire outlet. Okay. Oh, the polarized one just uses a bigger size. Okay. Three-wire, uh, 234-volt outlet. Uh, electron tube, 
Oh, heaps of plugs here. We don't care about that very much, do we? Uh, plugs. Positive voltage connection. Potentiometer. <coughs> Radio frequency probe. Okay, the top one's an antenna and the bottom one looks like an inductor. Gas filled rectifier. Semiconductor rectifier. which is obviously a rectifier, it's a type of diode. Silica controlled rectifier, the SCR, we know about those. Various types of switches, relays, oh they're all relays, relays, relays. Fixed resistor, preset resistor, tapped resistor, resonator, rheostat also known as a potentiometer. There might be some technical difference between a rheostat and a potentiometer, I'm not sure. Um, signal generator. Oh, that's interesting. That's a signal generator. We saw that in the old book teardown I did just recently. Okay. Battery. Oh, it's a solar battery. Solar cell. Constant current source. Constant voltage source speaker and we got switches silica controlled switch oh, that's interesting switch 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 terminals this is uh, uh it says unbalanced general terminal it's usually chassis ground test point thermocouple bunch of transformers Look at all those transformers. We got NPN transistor, we got a PNP transistor, we got a field effect N channel, P channel, uh, MOSFET N channel, MOSFET P channel, uh, enhancement mode. How do they indicate enhancement mode? Oh, I see, it's instead of a line, it's a block, block, block. It's an N channel enhancement mode. MOSFET and a P-channel enhancement mode MOSFET. Uh, photosensitive transistors. Uh, I haven't seen a uni-junction transistor. Interesting. Triac diode tube. <laughs> they actually had a tube called a diode. Oh, uh, here we go. Tube, 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 tube. Then got uh, just a uh, unspecified component. It's a block. You do sometimes see the block is a resistor. Voltmeter, watt meter. Uh, circular waveguide. Flexible waveguide. I don't know what waveguides are. Let's look those up. Wave uh, guide. What is a waveguide? I don't know. A rectangular waveguide, twisted waveguide, uh, wires crossing and connected, wires crossing not connected. There you go. And of course some resistor color codes here. I'll, uh, <coughs> oh, they, they, I mean, yeah, you can get those color codes anywhere. Actually, you know, I've got this cool thing if I can find it. It's a color wheel. Check it out. So this is a, a resistor or a capacitor color code and you can just pick like uh, red for two and then red for two and then uh, red for two zeros. So it's uh, uh, 2.2K. Red, red, red. So uh, I often use that little thing. And we're nearly done with this book. So here's our table of, uh, of values, color coding, part suppliers. Let's see what they recommend. So we've got, uh, this is all in America. Yeah, the, the phone numbers given are American phone numbers, I believe. So uh, we've got all electronics, 
Design Notes, Electronics Express, uh, Jamie, Jamie Co, Jamie Co, Mouser, there we go, Mouser is still pretty popular, Radio Shack, Ramsey Electronics, and that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put those uh, in the in the notes, and uh, and you can see if they're still there. So suggested additional reading. What have we got? Electronics explained. Uh, electronics, electricity and electronics. Electricity demystified. Oh, that's by the same author. Uh, electronics demystified. Uh, ham and shortwave radio for the electronics hobbyist. Uh, teach yourself electricity and electronics. Uh, complete electronics self-teaching guide with projects. Hacking electronics. Circuit analysis for dummies. <laughs> Uh, practical electronics for inventors. I think I've got that one. Cool. Uh, they're all from the same publisher. Oh no, they're not. They're not all. All right. I might uh, I might link those in the show notes as well. And then we've got our index. And after the index, we will be done. There you go. So that brings us to the end of our book, which was the Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm up to page uh, 114. I will finish reading this book. I'm halfway through. Um, if you like it, I suggest you get yourself a copy. It's, it's a good read. It's a good uh, handy uh, reference. Um, not too tricky. A uh, pretty uh, important practical skill, being able to understand the schematics. So. Uh, yeah, it's a good place to start if you don't know much about it. Um, thanks for watching the video. Uh, coming up soon, we're going to be um, putting uh, this uh, potentiometer uh, into um, uh, a circuit board, which will be this circuit board, uh, so that we can... Uh, sorry, this is a piezo buzzer, and we're going to attach a... a um, uh, potentiometer. So that'll be coming up next. Um, I, I hope to be back uh, soon with the uh, the Maxitronics labs. I've got heaps of those to go. I'm up to number nine, um, but it might take me a while just to, to get on with that. So in the meantime, I'll just be doing the normal shows. So um, yeah, the next project that you, that'll be coming up will be this one, and then there'll be two more uh, book teardowns, an old book teardown and a new book teardown. And then after that, we should be back on board for some uh, uh, some Maxitronics projects as well. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in those, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you again soon.